Namaskar and welcome to In Focus. If in the last six months you'd asked the question, who's the most controversial person in the country, the most likely answer would have been Ramesh Bhandari, former governor of Uttar Pradesh. Last Monday he resigned. Today, in an exclusive interview to In Focus, Mr. Bhandari, for the first time in public, defends himself against all the allegations and criticisms leveled against him. Mr. Bhandari, I want in this interview to primarily concentrate on the incidents during your governorship in UP that made you, as some people said, the most controversial governor in recent Indian history. Let's start with the most recent, that of February 98. When the Lok Tantric Congress and the Jan Tantric BSP withdrew support from the Kalyan Singh government, why did you dismiss the government and not choose to give it time to prove its majority on the floor? Well, let's be very clear on this point. On the 21st in the morning, without my even knowing anything about it, 12 ministers from the Kalyan Singh government, belonging to the Lok Tantra Congress party and the former Janta Dal, came saying that they were staking a claim. They had the support from all the other parties, the BSP, the Samajwadi party, the left front, the Congress, the BKKP, the Janta Dal. And they said that they had the majority support. I invited Mr. Kalyan Singh, told him that he had lost his support. He said he had the majority of the Lok Tantra Congress party with him and that he would like to test his strength on the floor of the House. Within a matter of a couple of hours, the 12 increased to 17. So I had 17 members of the Kalyan Singh government saying to me that they were in a position to form a government. Kalyan Singh said he would not resign. I had therefore no option but to dismiss Kalyan Singh and swear in the Jagdambika Pal government, which had 17 out of the Kalyan Singh government with them. But you know, Mr. Madari, that the Supreme Court in the Bomai case judgment and the Committee of Governors have both very clearly said that the majority of a government has to be proved on the floor of the House, not in Raj Bhavan. You are correct. First of all, the Bumai case does not apply here. The Bumai case applies to dismissal of a government and the promulgation of President's rule under Article 356. But that's only in its specifics. No, 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 in fine. the broad judgment, it very clearly says yes. that a government has a right to prove a okay. majority on the floor. So the second point is the principle of pro proving a majority on the floor of the House. Now that principle was adhered to by me. I gave a few days to Jadambeka Pal to prove his majority on the floor of the House and Kalyan Singh would have had the opportunity on the floor of the House to defeat yes, the government. Yes, but you changed the actual balance. You had sworn in a new government. You didn't give the benefit to Kalyan Singh, which is what you okay. should have done. I'll give you an answer to that. I had to take into account what happened the previous year in October. Precisely, and if I may interrupt, exactly. the previous year in October, when the BSP withdrew support, you gave Kalyan Singh two days. This time, you disregarded your own precedent. Why? No, please, again. Last year, when Mayavati withdrew support, there was no counterclaim. There was no counterclaim. He said he would prove his majority. I said, fair enough, prove your majority. You're saying that this time there was a counterclaim that this made a time, difference? This time, they would do support and there was a counterclaim. That made the difference? That made the total difference. Okay, then let me put this to you. Are you aware that the President wrote a letter to the then Prime Minister Indra Gujral in which he expressed his own opinion that he would like Kalyan Singh to be given a chance on the floor of the House and a copy of that letter was said to have been sent to you. Did you receive it? I would prefer, if I may, not to bring in the President into this picture. Now let me tell you why. Because this was not a question of Article 356. This is a question of what has to be done by the Governor under Article 162. But Mr. Bhandari, it's a question of the advice of the President at whose pleasure you serve. Did you receive the letter? First, I don't want to comment on that. Please, it would not be right. This is something which came onto the press and it would not be correct for me. It would not be correct for me Okay, I can to bring in the President into the picture. I can respect your desire to keep the President out of the picture, but tell me this. People will say that if he refuses to admit he received the letter, the only reason is that he cannot then go on to admit he ignored it. That's why he says he never got it. <laughs> well, let people draw their inferences. It, the responsibility has been fairly and squarely mine. I have faced that responsibility. I have taken that responsibility. 
And I would please prefer not to make any comment on this but issue. But there's a very serious allegation mm. that you disregarded the advice of the person in whose pleasure you serve. There can be those allegations. I would there say humbly, I would not make a comment. Okay, so I got my position. I had to go on what was before me. This a similar case had taken place in 1995. The circumstances are not totally identical. No circumstances. Mr. Moti Lalvora, with reference to the case yes. in 95, in an interview to the Pioneer, said yes. that in fact it's not similar. He had given Mulaim what he considered a reasonable time. Mulaim turned that down. That's why Mulaim was dismissed. So it is different as Mr. Moti Lalvora claims. I myself say circumstances are different. I'm okay, not can saying, I just come back? No, I'm not saying that the circumstances are the same. But even as far as what Mr. Moti Lalvora says, there's a difference of opinion because Mulaim Singh says something else. But leave that aside. Quite right. So let's the not point, go into the, something no, where we're but, not yeah, certain. But let's what, come back to one issue. Yeah. Can I just ask you a simple question? Don't comment about the president, but can you confirm whether you received a copy of the letter he wrote to Inder Gujral? Please let me not say anything on that. I, I wish that this was kept out. It, was, it, is, it, it, it would be very, very wrong for me to do that. But I please do. Let me leave it at that. Let me reverse it. Can you say, no, you didn't receive the letter? Let me not. No, don't push me on this. Now, let me get back okay, to then the let question. Me, then let me come to a second aspect yes. of what happened in February. The Jagdambika Pal government mm -hmm. was sworn in at 10 at night, yes. seemingly by stealth, when people were preparing to go to sleep. Why did you do it at that time? I waited till 9 o'clock. Because 9 o'clock, by 9 o'clock, from the number of 12, the number had gone up to 17. When it was 12, I thought it was a little marginal. When it went up to 17, and this included Naresh Agarwal, and the whole jing bang lot, Harishankar Tiwari, and everybody You're there. saying when it went to 17, you saw them in at I, once? I said, they came 17. Then you could not keep the whole thing in limbo. But why it at night not? in the dark? Why not the next morning in daylight? Bhai Bhati was also sworn in at night. Many people are sworn in at night. If you please look back into the history of what happens But in to the world no, outside, no, it looked surreptitious. No. It looked as if you were trying no. to perhaps yes, preclude yes. the courts. No, because the court sat overnight. In any case, the matter when Mulayam Singh was dismissed. Now, I think I, people just skip over this. When Mulayam Singh was dismissed and Maya Bhati was sworn in with the support from the BJP, the dismissal of Mulayam Singh was hailed all over, debated in Parliament. Leaders of the BJP said that that was the greatest step in the protection of the democracy that took place. Faruqi went to the courts against the decision of the governor of dismissal. And Justice Raza of the Allahabad High Court gave a categorical judgment. Can I, can I interrupt and say that just because different politicians have taken different views for political reasons doesn't mean that there is not a right and wrong in this case. Let's stick to this case. Let's yes, not politicize I, I this agree, by comparison. Okay, okay. Why did you dismiss the Kalyan Singh government and swear in a new government, not just at 10 at night, but less than 12 hours before the second stage of polling? I mean, that was in the fact, worst moment uh, to do it. You see, you can't hold these things in limbo. You cannot hold these things in limbo. When support has been withdrawn, and there is a claimant right there, sitting in Rajpakhan, with all the support that they have, claiming that they can form the government, they have the majority, and they did have the majority, it was very clear, the Kalyan Singh government was left with maximum of 205. And in that I include the 12 BSP MLAs who had defected, whose status is still yet to be determined after five months have passed. I included in that there was no other way in which I could have delayed it. Okay, that, that's how you see it. Let me put to you how members of the audience are going to react. They're going to say he did it at 10 at night, virtually in the dark. He did it in haste. He did it the day before the second voting, virtually mm -hmm. 12 hours before it. Mm -hmm. And he did it by denying what many people considered was their constitutional duty, the benefit of the doubt to Kalyan. The explanation they offer is that he did it to help Mulayam because Mulayam had an election the next day in Sambal. Now, now that, is, that is so ridiculous. By the time the uh, swearing-in took place, it was 11.30, polling started at 7 o'clock in the morning, and if you say it was to help Mulayam Singh, uh, then it really also infers uh, that the polling and all the arrangements were not fair even earlier.
Because that would imply that they were... No, it doesn't were, infer that uh, they weren't fair earlier. Uh, it certainly infers that when they happened, they may not have been fair at that time. That's what it infers. Uh, no, it, 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 on the, again, you want to come and put it in another way? If that was a consideration, there was this factor of the sympathy vote. It was there in my mind, but I could not help taking... I could not take that into account. And as pollsters have eventually said, the, it helped the BJP, it did not help Mr. Answer. Bhandari, we're missing slightly the point yes. of what the allegation yes. really raises, yes. which is that it's not just the constitutional legitimacy of your action that's being disputed mm. and questioned. More seriously, it's the morality of your motivations that is being questioned. That is really serious. I'm afraid I've, I, I, you have to look at it from how I saw the situation in Uttar Pradesh at that time. And it's only I who know what it was like. Are you saying you're the only uh, judge of your actions? I'm not the only judge. After all, if the some authority is given, then it does mean that you have to be the judge at that particular time. But if people... So I, I know, please, let me get this point also very well cleared. All types of things had been happening in UP. Hmm? I had had all kinds of reports. So it is not that the voting in the earlier phase had been perfectly above board and clear. In fact, how many allegations? You probably heard the allegation of Mr. Chandrasekhar, former Prime Minister. There were a number of others. My point Are we at not that moving time, away from the subject? No, no, the subject, no, no, no. The subject no, no, concerns the morality of your motivation. Morality of my motivation is, number one, when somebody had the majority, when a, another government is already in a minority, these are not matters where you can delay by even a day. These are matters where you take a decision there and then, and that is what happens. If again, somebody again, that, a, that, that's a yeah. very clear answer from your point of view, yes. but members of the audience hearing this are going to say virtually every single person in the country, including the president, was deeply critical of Ramesh Bandhari. Ramesh Bandhari is saying, they are all wrong, I alone am right. Again, may I say, the number of people who celebrated on the 21st night when the dismissal took place is something you have no idea about. The public was celebrating, and if you would ask some of the communities, you would find out what it was. Are they your vindication? They are not my vindication. I neither did it for the gallery, I neither did it to try and avoid criticism or to attract criticism. Can I put my last question yes. for this part from you? Yes. It became very clear in February that the president was deeply displeased by the way you had behaved. Yes. Letters in the press had been leaked yes. extensively. He'd yes. even formally written to the prime minister yes. and the prime minister acknowledged yes. the letter. Yes. Why did you not resign immediately? Because I was told that there was a decision of the cabinet that this matter should be discussed and decided upon after the new government had been formed. And uh, please remember another point, not that I wish to make it political. The BJP was demanding my dismissal, but all the other parties, and please verify that, whether it was the Congress, or it was the BSP, or it was the Samajwadi Party, or it was the Left Front, or it was the Janta Dal, supported vociferously, eloquently, Vocally. Isn't, isn't that in fact why you didn't resign? Because you were hoping that the new government would contain perhaps Mulayam Singh Yadav and he would protect you. Not Mulayam Singh Yadav. How I mean, Mulayam Singh Yadav was not a contender as far as I know for prime ministership. Let me put and it, neither was the question of uh, somebody else would protect me. Let me put it they, the other way around. Yes. People say he only resigned when the president appointed Atal Bihari Vajpayee because he was scared he'd be sacked. That proves the point that you delayed resigning in the hope that a new government, if it was not a BJP government, would protect and preserve you. No, I would, would not wish to have it been preserved. If a new government had come, I would have sent in my papers at that time, the new government would have been able to take a decision in an objective fashion the way they've considered it appropriate. You'd have resigned because no matter who the government was? I would have then resigned after they had been sworn in. Here I resigned. The day it was appointed, I said, fine, he has been appointed, here is my letter. What do you say to people who claim that by refusing to resign immediately, mm. he has lowered the dignity of the governorship of Uttar Pradesh simply because he wanted to cling to office a little longer? Uh, you think five days would matter to me? You think ten days would have mattered to me? This is all that it was. I mean, to clinging to office has, what is the relevance of clinging to office? I've never been in the pursuit of an office never in my life till now. And to think that I want to do it for singing on for five days, ten days, fifteen days? Okay, Heaven's sake, it's so ridiculous. Mr. Mandari, these, are, these are our... 
these are by critics who say so. Let's take a break there at that point. Okay. I want to come back in part two okay. and talk about the other incidents yes. that made you, as I said, perhaps the most controversial okay. governor in recent history. Okay. But first, we'll take a quick commercial break. See you in a moment. Welcome back to In Focus. Ramesh Mandari in an exclusive interview is defending himself against all the allegations and criticisms made of him whilst he was governor of Uttar Pradesh. Mr. Mandari, let's turn to the incident that happened in October 97 when the BSP withdrew support from the Kalyan Singh yes. government. At the time, you gave Mr. Kalyan Singh two days to prove his majority. Correct. Why just two? Because there were such uh, <coughs> serious uh, complaints to me that already the corporate sector had come in, there was massive buying and selling taking place, and also the fact that my decision to give them time itself was very severely criticized, because here was a case of a coalition. A coalition, major coalition partner had withdrawn support. Therefore, they were demanding that that was adequate grounds for dismissal of the Kalyan Singh government and the imposition of presidency. But Mr. Bandari, I refuse to do that. But no. at exactly the same yeah. time, in yes. Shankar Singh Vaghela's case in yes. Gujarat, the governor yes. gave him seven days. Why could you have not done something similar? Uh, they gave him seven days. Mr. Krishan Kant had given three days to Rama Rao in, in Andhra Pradesh. The, the, the crux of the matter is how much time should be given for MLAs to convene and be there in the assembly. 48 hours was adequate. And in that 48 hours, in that 48 hours, they had no problem. It's not that they did not did uh, get support. They, they had no support. problem, you're absolutely right. But they, your critics say that you only gave 48 hours in the hope that he would have a problem. You were trying to foot fault him by shrinking the time. Not at all, not at all. In fact, at the time that the support was withdrawn already, they had tied up with these people because why was support withdrawn? Support was withdrawn because of all those bellicose statements being made by BJP leaders that they did not want and that they were not dependent Tell me on Mayavati. How do you know that at the time support was withdrawn, they'd already tied up with these people? How can well, you say that? Well, uh, one, one does have information and but what is happening was that they were in This information, does it not suggest that you're party to one side of this not dispute? Not at all, not at all. I gave them time. They went along and proved their majority on the on the 19th night was when support was uh, on the 19th the support was withdrawn. The vote of confidence was stated for the 21st. On by the 20th itself. Okay, let's let's come to the vote of confidence and yes. what happened at the yes. time because yes. you were severely criticised yes. for your action. The first thing is that the governor chose to send two observers to the Vidhan Sabha and chose to tell the speaker of the Vidhan Sabha how to conduct the vote. The conference of speakers presided over by the Lok Sabha speaker severely criticized you for this. <laughs> Why did you do it? Now this is again how things go along and be seen in a different perspective. Number one, observers. They were not observers. I sent two of my representatives to the governor's gallery. They, had, they were not a part of the uh, working procedures of the assembly. Number one. Number two, as far as the message was concerned, a similar message was sent, totally similar message was sent by Motilal Vora to the speaker in 1995. And what was the message? Three points. Number one, you will have a division lobby. Number two, there will be a peaceful poll. Number three, you will, continue, you will finish the proceedings within one day, within one session. Let me that was you, all that they were. Let me tell you what the speaker's conference accused you of. I, I know want to quote it. They said you were guilty of an onslaught on the dignity, authority and autonomy of the legislature. That's strong stuff. That's strong stuff, but they, they, they have not gone into the history of it. There is legal opinion of the Madras High Court says that the governor is a part of the assembly and the governor has all the right to send a message even in regard to procedures. So you're saying they're mistaken and they don't Absolutely. And they misunderstood the situation? They misunderstood the situation, they were not given the full facts and I placed all those facts before, before the speaker, I placed all the facts, I wish it had been taken up in Okay, Let's come to another aspect, yes. perhaps the most controversial yes. aspect of the lot. The newspaper said that you had sent perhaps as many as nine different recommendations to Delhi for the imposition of president's rule, okay. that some of these were sent even before the voting was was held and that some were sent to the defense ministry, not the home ministry. Absolute. I don't want to use a bad word, a very mild one. Totally wrong. Okay, let's, Number, let, let's go I'll, to the one back by one. To how, many, how many recommendations for president's rule did you send? Not only, only the last one. All the what do you mean the last one? How the many? last letter, the, all the earlier letters were nothing else but giving details of what was going on 
every few hours. How many such letters did you send? I think I must have sent about four. Four letters only showing, saying, now so-and-so has joined here, now so-and-so has gone here. Okay, so, so there, were, there were four letters informing them of the goings-on, as you put it? Of the goings-on, exactly. And how many recommendations for the imposition of President's rule? There's recommendation for President's rule. Now, let's get to that. First of all, let me try no, but just one, just no. so that we clarify this, was one, there one, two, one, three? One, 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 just one, one, purely one, the last. Okay, tell me something, did yeah. you send any recommendation for President's rule before the voting in the Assembly? No. Did you send any communication of the goings-on before the voting in the Assembly? Yes. So it's possible that one was mistaken for the other? Maybe, this is because nobody has those. Okay, did you send any letters of the goings-on to the Defence Ministry rather than the Home no. Ministry? No, they were only sent to the President, to the Prime Minister and to the Home Minister. None, none, repeat, none went to the Defence Were Minister. you in touch with Mulayam Singh Yadav in any way at all? I was not in touch with Mulayam Singh. Not even on the phone? On the phone he had called me on other issues. Everybody was aware of it. In fact, a number of people were in touch with me. Not by Mulayam Singh, number of people were in touch with me. But this uh, issue uh, of the imposition was not discussed with him at all? Not at all. This is, now, let me get down to the imposition of President's rule. Please, let's get this thing clear. Under Article 356, that is the imposition of President's rule, the governor sends a report. Now, on the basis of that report or otherwise, the cabinet in Delhi the acts. The cabinet in Delhi has to act. It is the president who takes the decision on the aid and advice of the council of ministers. Therefore, the governor's report is only an input. Now, let, it, let me be very clear. So, you're on saying this. that you're not responsible if the president turns around and rejects the advice? Well, it is between him and the Council of Ministers. Yes, but in rejecting the advice, he was refuting the logic and disputing the judgment of his governor. It was the clearest, it was the clearest sign oh, he didn't have confidence sake, in you. Heaven's sake, now again you're missing the point. Mine is a report. The report has to be evaluated, considered, discussed by the cabinet. Then the cabinet goes along and makes a recommendation. Here was a report. Let me give you another instance. The governor of Gujarat recommended imposition of president's rule just now, and the cabinet has not taken any yes, decision. Yes, but in it. this instance, for the first time in Indian history, the president sent back to the cabinet for reconsideration yes, yes. a document that had gone from them. Correct. That document was based upon a report from you as governor. Why did you not choose to resign? It is for. It is the. Decision of the cabinet. The cabinet could very well tell me. No, Mr. Bandari, I'm asking you a deeper, more personal yeah, question. It's yeah. a question of your honor, your judgment. Your oh, judgment was being questioned. But your honor was at stake. Why did you not resign? I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. I gave my own full report. I gave my report. I said what the basis was, why I thought the best thing under these circumstances where massive horse trading had taken place. Now, let me get to that position. You have. 22 people from the Congress who defect, they came on and they got elected on a mandate which was anti-BJP. This is a fraud on the electorate. It's a fraud on the electorate and they went along yes, and did that. Yes, but it was huh? constitutionally yes. not improper because yes. Schedule 10 yes. permit, permits yes. splits. Absolutely. So let's come back to the point that's now at issue. The, BSP no, but Mr. Oh. Badari, let's come back to the yes. point at issue. It's a central point. People say that he preferred to stick on to the chair rather than resign and preserve his honor. I, well, people can say that. I, as far as I am concerned, I sent my report in my full conscience with a clear mind. If I made a mistake, if I may say so, and I say I did make a mistake, perhaps the mistake I made was when each and every person who had defected, their names were came on the list for being sworn in as cabinet ministers and ministers of state, when 18 of those at least some, somewhere around that figure, had criminal records, one even with a non bailable warrant. You should have that list I back. I should have questioned that, questioned it. I, if it Perhaps. Came back to, my mistake was that. I, let can me, you imagine? You say your mistake yes. was only just that, yes. but let me then put something yes. to you that seems to be the mm. popular opinion of the country today. I began by saying that perhaps you were the most mm. controversial governor in modern history. Let me say that in the eyes of many newspapers, mm. you've become perhaps one of the most unpopular people in India today. Doesn't that worry you? I don't think I'm worried about all that. I think I want to do what I feel is correct, and I have done that. Do you and have no regrets you, at all? I do not have any regrets at all. Would I you... did what I thought was correct. I did it. 
and I have no regrets about would it. Would you repeat but the same thing? I, certainly, I would never, never, never accept a post of governor again, and I'm sure I, I, no one would ever offer it to me either. I put it that way also. But would you repeat history again if you had this chance, or would you make some amendments and some corrections? I don't know. I don't know. I think the circumstances were such that there was anybody else would have probably had to do the same. I, I wish somebody else. Now, now we have got the future ahead. Huh? Can, can I ask you one uh, last uh, question? Sure. We're talking about the future ahead. Mm -hmm. Nominations to the Rajya Sabha from Uttar Pradesh are going to have to happen in July. Will we at the time see you appear as a Samajwadi Party Rajya Sabha MP? I have neither any such offer, nor have I thought that far. If huh? the offer is made, will you accept? Well, let me see what happens. Let, let me see put, what there is. Let me yes. put something to you. If you do accept mm. and you do become a Rajya Sabha mm. MP from the Samajwadi Party, mm. people will turn around and say, he's getting the reward from Mulayam Singh for the help he gave him in UP. <laughs> people are in a free country, the people can say what they wish to say. I have no, I can't question that. They are their views. But this is hypothetical at the moment, so... Mr. Bhandari, on that point, thank you very much for answering these questions and facing the press so openly. That's it for this week. Next week, we'll be back with another interview. But today, from the residence of former UP Governor Ramesh Bhandari in New Delhi, goodbye.